We're all set. All right. All right, it being 6 p.m. on Wednesday, May 13th, 2020, we will begin the fourth in our series of budget hearings for the Committee of Ways and Means. All votes will be by roll call. Uh, if you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function. And for anyone in attendance, for members of the public, please reach out to the town council via our email and we will get your questions answered for you. Uh, the official public hearing for the operating budget will be held on June 2nd at 7 p.m. So with that, we can open it up. Um, and Clerk Samino, can you please begin with a roll call vote? Council Barica? Here. Council Connors? Here. Council Flaherty? Here. Council Ryan? Here. Council Sasha? Here. All present. Thank you. Uh, is Sue, I'm sorry, did we get minutes? Um, April 7th? Yeah. We can put that on hold if, if you didn't. Um, did you get them in the Dropbox? That's okay. Let's put it on hold. Let's I'm sorry. We'll just put it on the next meeting. No okay. problem. I apologize for that. Um, is there, there is no old business. Um, so with that, we'll move on to new business, uh, which is 20038 Mayor FY 2021 operating budget or take up any action relative thereto. Is there a motion to take off the table order 20038? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Clerk Semino, roll call vote, please. Councilor Barica? Yes. Council Connors? Yes. Council Flaherty? Yes. Council Ryan? Yes. Council Sasha? Yes. All in favor. Thank you so much. Um, so for this evening's uh, budget hearing, we have with us the Blue Hills Regional High School. Thank you so much to Ms. Resendez and Ms. Rossetti for joining us this evening and for putting together all of the materials ahead of time. I know you've provided us with a lot of information um, and we've had a chance to review it and look forward to hearing from you tonight. Um, Solicitor Taub, did you have anything you wanted to open with this evening? I just to say thank you to Blue Hills for being with us. It's very nice to meet you both. Um, wish our introductions were in person, but hopefully someday soon. Um, and with that, just looking forward to hearing their presentation along with the committee. Excellent. Um, okay, well with that, um, I think we'll turn it over to the Blue Hills team and to walk through their presentation and then we can open it up to questions. Sure, perfect. So I'll, um, I'll share my screen now so I can bring up the presentation. All right. For the chair, Michelle, what's your title? Business manager. Thank you. Yep. So um, I'm going to go through this budget uh, and, you know, kind of we go line by line through the budget. I know you guys have all received it ahead of time, but, you know, just to reinforce some of our decision making when coming up with this budget. Um, I want to say first, hello, thank you for having us. It's, you know, really great for us to be able to continue this process. Um, so I appreciate your willingness to do this even virtually. Um, so, you know, I want to talk about first what our budget priorities. So just to give you a, a quick rundown on how Blue Hills comes up with our budget is, uh, all the way back in September, we start uh, the conversations, even more so over the summer, but we have a, a strict calendar that we work through uh, when coming up with the budget, when we work with uh, teachers to um, department heads and then to administration. And we really go through the budget using these priorities. Uh, they're, they're what we stress to everyone who is a budget owner and and um, we believe that these priorities help us build a responsible budget. So, 
you know, we're responsible in the sense that it addresses numerous and unique needs of all the individual students. We're realistic in the sense that it's built with full knowledge and understanding of economic factors that generate revenue for the member towns and for the district. And we're responsive in the sense of the foundation of the budget is built on known needs of the students with full understanding that the tools that our teachers need to meet that need. So there, there, there is, you know, immense thought put into this budget moving forward. And especially this year, you know, previous to this, you know, COVID uh, issues that have come up, you know, we have made a conscious effort in this budget to keep it as low as we possibly could because we understood that the districts have put in um, funds in the last couple of years for our building project. So we wanted to be, you know, cognizant of that um, when we built this budget. So you'll notice it's a very lean budget. It's a 2% increase. There are not many increases in most of our expense lines um, or, you know, new positions within our salary lines because we really wanted to make sure that we were being you know, responsive to the needs of the districts that we serve. Um, our budget, this is our budget goals that we work towards. This is also put out in our, you know, budget request booklet that we give to everyone. And so, you know, we talk about a financial goal, a school building goal, an equity and access goal, our student engagement goal, and communication and community relations goals. So these are all the things that we you know, besides what our priorities are, these are the goals that we wish to obtain using this budget. So move right into the budget. Um, sorry, hold on one second. I'm like behind on my paperwork here. Um, this is just a summary that includes both salary and expense, but it gives you an overview. Um, the info will be broken down further on in the budget presentation. But if you notice, hold on, I gotta move my screen here so I can see. Um, oops, sorry. If you notice here, our increase in salary accounts is 0.8%, and our increase um, in our expense account is 3.5%, with a total of all accounts at a 2% increase. Our salary accounts, the, you know, associated with the bulk of contractual raises. Um, so our district and leadership administration is negative 3.4%. And I'll give you examples on why it is that. In Can I ask you a question? So I'm sorry. What, what, did, what was the percent increase you gave out for raises for this year? Or, or for the latest contract that you had? So our, we're actually in negotiations with all four of our unions at the moment. So add to the fun of this all. Um, so we're, we technically have to almost guesstimate where we think we're gonna land um, within our contractual. And I believe it was at 2%. So what, so what was the last contract you gave out? What were the raises? Uh, I actually don't have that information on me. I, I don't know if Jill knows the answer to that, um, but I believe it was probably around the same 2%. I think that's what we gauged off of. No, the last year they actually got a 1% raise. Oh, so, sorry. So I don't remember the previous two years, but they were pretty low because of the project. Thank you. Well. welcome. Um, we can move on. So if you just to look, so we had some reduction in instructional staff 1.4 um, in facility staff a 0.5 administrative staff a point um, one, which was a, a total of a 0.2 reduction in staff. I mean, a, a 2.0 reduction in staff. In our thousand, so I'm just going to sum up some of our major changes in our thousand series. Um, present changes negative 3.4%. Um, we had a decrease due to restructuring of district school committee sports staff schedules. We reduced the schedule. Um, superintendent line um, due to the new contract uh, replacement of the old superintendent, there was savings there, as well as my position, the business manager line. Um, there was a decrease due to my uh, contract. In the 2000 series, uh, curriculum directors line, again, it was a decrease due to the nice new high school principal contract. Um, department head was decreased to 
a transfer of salary cost to the book postgraduate LPN program. Our leadership line, there was an increase in anticipated because of contractual obligations. Classroom teachers, an increase due to anticipated contractual obligations, but also a reduction of one FTE. Instructional support, um, all special education related support positions are now funded through the federal IDEA grant and the new cosmetology support is the only position funded through that account. All other lines changes are due to anticipated changes in collective bargaining agreement. 3000 series um, is a 4.1%. Our health services line is anticipated contractual increase, no increase or reduction of programs. Other student activities line is a line that was underfunded in the 2020 budget. And I'll tell you that that was an advisor stipend that was missed in our budget for this year. Um, just somehow it was missed. So we just needed to add that back into the budget. It's not an addition. We paid it um, through other account, like through managing budgets on other accounts this year, but we felt the need to move it back into the correct, the budgeting back into the correct line. Um, and the school security line adjustment to reflect an anticipated need in FY, in FY 2021. 4,000 series, which is, you know, building and maintenance. Um, uh, through, the, through the chair, through the chair, can I ask what that anticipated need is for the security? Um, so I believe we are taking on, uh, I, hold on one second. Uh, it actually break down exactly the security, possibly the security officer. We're paying half of uh, the salary for the Canton, um, not security officer. Um, SRO. Thank you. Yes. Welcome. The Canton SRO. Um, it was agreement between the district and the town of uh, Canton for this year. They, I guess they had been asking for two years for us to fund the full salary. The previous superintendent and business manager came to the agreement to fund 50% of the salary. Um, 4,000 series change is um, custodial services, um, anticipated contractual increases, maintenance of, maintenance of building, anticipated contractual increases. In district technology, this is an increase in student uh, associated with staffing changes within the department. There's not a change in FTE, but there is an increase in experience and knowledge of staff. So we move on to the expense accounts. Again, this is just a summary. But um, the 2021 expense, bu expense budget has increased 3.5%. Much of that is from increases in fixed cost, as well as funds held in reserve for contract negotiations and pending contractual raises. Being cognizant that this is the second year of the renovation project, assessment increases, the district worked at keeping a budget growth to minimum, despite necessary increases in some areas. While there are dis decreases in the instructional expense lines of the budget, the district will provide the same level of service to students as it did in 2020. Administrative ex expenses increased 4.6%, salaries decreased by 3.4% for a net decrease of 11,638 in administrative costs. The operations and maintenance of plant is essentially level funded. The district is counting on decreased water usage due to renovation project upgrades and solar credits for electrical use to offset any increases in price of usage of utilities. The increase in the student services line is tied to the district funding the resource officer for the first time, as well as contractual student transportation costs. The 198471 increase of the 5000 series is tied to anticipated increases in employee benefits and property and liability insurance. So their major changes, um, line 110, which is district school committee, a decrease in anticipated needs based on expenditure history. Because we had 2019, we had included funds for a superintendent search. 1210 is increased costs for community engagement, public relations efforts. And this ties back to our goal of communication within our districts. 
1410 is a dis decrease in anticipated needs, which is the, the business office. Um, 1430 is level funded for anticipated collective bargaining negotiations. And 1450 is an increase associated with software account reclassification and increased contract costs. So I'll just give a, a quick example, um, you know, explanation of the district technology. You'll see through a couple of different DOE function codes that there'll be increases um, in lines where um, district IT was moved to. The Department of Ed did a reclassification of their function codes to better align all districts. And with that, we had to move things into lines where they weren't originally budgeted for. So it's not really an increase, it's just a shift. Um, 2000 expense account major changes. So this is um, anything to do with um, the teaching of students. Um, 2110 to 2210. Small reductions in travel expenses and contracted services. Again, this was, you know, uh, the district saying, what are our real, real needs? Um, and so you, you'll see in areas that um, we took the liberty to to reduce um, different expenses, basically, um, where they would least affect the classroom. 2250 is a reclassification expenses with an increased software costs. That, that again is that IT DOE function code switch. 2356 and 2358 is um, a small decrease based on moving uh, funds uh, costs to grants. 2410 is an annual academic text replacement cycle. Um, this includes updating astronomy text, psychology text, and math Excel software. Updated vocational pro program text includes electrical code books, new consumable text, or replacement text for the criminal justice shop, cosmetology, computer tech, engineering, health assistant, graphic design, digital and visual communications, collision repair, electrical programs. This line varies each year depending on what our replacement cycle is and what the needs of the department is. 2415, um, the majority of the vocational programs received level funding in 2020 for instructional materials. The bulk increase can be contributed to an increased cost associated with licensing and certification costs for students and other related contracted support services. 2420 is the cost of major equipment or material is split between the district budget and the federal Perkins grant. The Perkins grant will cover 180,000 of the vocational programs needs. Major purchases include materials for culinary, cosmetology, health assisting, automotive technology and design and visual graphics programs. 2451, much like 20, 2420, the line the district has been working to stay ahead on Chromebook purchases. So in any one year, there's not a big increase for the replacement of Chromebooks or other educational technology. The district remains committed to the one-to-one -one Chromebook program for staff and students. And again, this put us in a great position when we had to go virtual learning um, because our students were already equipped with their Chromebooks. 2453, instructional hardware associated with vocational program needs. 2455, instructional software tools for staff and students such as discovery streaming, LinkedIn learning, and curriculum mapper. And 2800, SPED services provided to students by contractors such as speech and language services and specialized tutoring services. A 3,000 expense um, account major changes. Um, 3,300 line is increased to daily school bus, school bus contractual increase. District has increased its allocation for homeless student transportation by 36,000 based on an increase of 40,000 in fiscal year 2020. The district experienced a dramatic increase in homeless transportation for the first time. And I think that um, I'm sure you've all heard that there is a, it, there's an uptick in homeless, um, homelessness and homeless transportation needs of most districts across the state. So uh, 3510 is in anticipated contractual increases for coaches and 3600 
district will cover 50% of the Canton Police Department provided schools resource office salary for the first time. Um, 4,000 expense major account changes, um, 4,100 line, uh, anticipated increase in supply cost. Uh, just to give, because I've gotten this question before, so um, these supply costs, because of the new project, we have additional filters. A lot of this has to do with filters because of the installation of our, um, um, because of the project installation. So that has to do with the additional filters that will be needed uh, throughout the building. 4130 is a minimal increase. Um, district will spend 2021 evaluating energy and water consumption post the renovation. We anticipate a shift in cost between utilities and we're unsure of the impact on animal, an, annual usage of or cost at this time. Um, we have seen a decrease in our water utility um, in the last couple of months of FY20. Um, we had Per the project, we had replaced, Jill, what were those again? I'm sorry, I know. Water coolers. Water coolers that were previously cooled by water flow, which are now um, cooled by air. And that just because of that one replacement, we have seen some savings in our water. Uh, 4210, 4220, 4225, and 4230 lines are essentially le level funded. During the 2021 fiscal year, the district will evaluate the impact of the renovation on each of these cost centers. And 4400 line, costs will fluctuate annually based on cost of license renewals and le length of contract. Five thousand expense major changes. Um, Fifty-one hundred is an increase in assessment set by PEREC. Um, Fifty-two hundred reflects an anticipated four to five percent increase over twenty twenty projected actual costs for active employee health insurance costs. Through the Michelle, through the chair, um, your PEREC cost. Are you keeping up with that? Is um, yep. How, how are you doing with funding the PEREC costs? We, we're keeping up with it. We have a, a yearly uh, amount that we pay uh, where we are determining, you know, next year, maybe pushing off the payment if we go to the 112th budget, um, because we're going to be hit with our, our bond payments as well as our retirement um, board payments, both in the month of July. And um, so we're, we're having a little bit of discussion on if we can push that out. Um, a little bit further so that we make sure that we make the one twelfth budget. But uh, yeah, we're, we pay that every. How about the OPED? Up with that. Yep. About the, through the chair, how about the OPED? Um, we have, oh, sorry. We have not made contributions to um, OPEB. Um, we, we have discussed that. We had our auditor uh, at our last um, school committee meeting and he discussed how we would get a, a better interest uh, percent rate um, and how much we're being charged each year if, if we would start to contribute to that. So it is a discussion that we're having, but currently at the moment, we didn't have the funds to allocate to um, paying that. Thank you. Uh, where was I? Uh, 5250 re reflects an anticipated 4% increase over 2020 projected actual costs for active, in did I say that active? That's supposed to say retired, sorry, um, health insurance costs. 5260, an anticipated 4 to 5% increase over 2020 costs for vehicle building and liability insurance. And I, I can tell you, we did just get our um, insurance uh, quote for uh, next year, and it falls right in line. I think it was like 4.3% um, with that. 5,300 is the cost of our copier leases contract and 5,450 is debt, debt service. Um, it's all captured in the sex, se oh my gosh, I'm having like mouth, we're not working. Um, it's captured in a separate project assessment. So we don't, we don't allocate it to the general fund budget. 7,000 and 8,000 expense major changes. Um, 7,200 is funds budgeted for capital items not covered in the renovation project. Um, it could be transferred if we don't use it to cover vehicle acquisitions or improvements to ground. 
it, it's really our, our line for, you know, those capital expenditures that come up throughout the year um, that we need to cover as a district. Michelle, through the yeah. chair. So I think it might be good at some point for you to explain uh, the capital project that you had going on at the school because we have a lot of new counselors and maybe what other things you need to maintain that don't fall under the new facilities. So sure. that at some point it might be valuable. Okay, yep. Um, 8,100 and 8,200, that's annually budgeted capital funds to be allocated to reducing capital borrowing costs associated with the renovation project. So um, this is the assessment calculations. Um, I put this in there because I knew you had some new um, members. This isn't normally part of our presentation, but um, just to talk about the methods of assessment, uh, I'm not gonna read through this, but for you guys, if you wanted to go back so that you could see how we come up with our assessments, but you know, basically we're handed um, the numbers from the state when it comes to our chapter 70 and our um, minimal, minimal local contribution. Um, that's what sets forth what you Braintree has to pay Blue Hills to be a member of the district. And then there's an additional assessment on top of that that really is the number that Blue Hills needs to make the budget whole, um, which it was a very small number. It was only, I believe, well, actually I can just move forward. Um, this right here is just for you if you wanted to, to take a look at the chapter 70 that the state sends out. Um, I do have a, the next slide, but this is just telling you where I got the next slide from. So in case you wanted to go and take a look and you can look at previous years, um, once the, you know, once the next budget comes out, whenever that is, um, you can take a look at it and see the changes as well. So this is where you would go to find that information. So this is where we get our minimum local contribution. And you'll see that these numbers are, are trans, you know, um, transcribed directly onto our assessment calculation. So this is what the state gives us as the breakdown um, and that your, your um, what your allocated amount is to Blue Hills. And this is just, again, like a summary, but I, you know, I, I always want to give out more information if you guys want to take a look at it, just so that you can see the transparency of the numbers from the state to our assessment. This is just a summary of how we come up with our budget. So you'll see, you know, we put in for chapter 78. Um, again, I want to preface this all by saying, um, this is this is based on the governor's budget um, that came out in January. Uh, if there are changes to the governor's budget based on our Chapter 70 funding or your um, required required local contribution, uh, Blue Hills has um, been working in the last, you know, so many weeks that everybody has been working on it um, to come up with additional budgets that, in in the case of any reduction to these, we would um, be able to move forward with some other budgets that we had been working on. And those budgets do things when we talk about a reduction in, in expense lines or salary reductions, as well as using additional revenue from other sources that we have. Um, so we have a revenue source that comes in every year as a, as a regional school district, we get regional transportation aid, and that comes in every year and we can use all of it, we can carry forward some of it, um, we can carry forward all of it if we don't need it in the budget, but we have allocated the majority of it to this budget um, for next year. Depending on what we save in transportation costs this year, there may be um, some additional funds that we'll be able to allocate towards next year's budget, um, depending on what the transportation, our we're in the midst of negotiations with our transportation company right now for this year um, because of the COVID closure. Uh, our E&D funding, that's our excess and deficiency, and that's the amount we allocate um, from our reserves to lower the budget. We try and keep that similar every year um, based on, um, so that we don't, prov you know, don't end up with a funding cliff where we run out of E&D and then the districts are held to come up with the full amount. So, I thought somebody was asking something, sorry. 
Um, and then you see the next line is our regional member assessment. So that's our required contribution. And then the assessed contribution, again, is that number that we need in order to make the budget whole based on our budget. So you're assessed that portion. So regional required contribution is your required contribution, how we come up with your per pupil cost is your required contribution divided by your October 1 numbers, um, which is the, the number of students that are certified by the state on October 1. The assessed contribution is that number is divided by all of our students equally. So all districts pay this, the same amount per student for that assessed contribution. In, um, if you look in the assessment book that I had sent out, you'll see that breakdown where, where it talks about the per pupil uh, expenditures. Um, so that's where we come up with our, you know, total Blue Hills operating budget revenue sources. Um, and then we talk about our, our capital and debt service. Oh, I don't know why that just did that. Um, so this is really just a, a line by line breakdown, I think, for you guys to be able to really see where we take our revenue from um, in order for us to fund our budget. Uh, the additional assessment at the bottom is the schools to career assessment um, as well. So our rationale, um, the following five, five items were key factors in calculating the 2021 assessment for each town. Um, the MSBA renov renovation project debt service, um, enrollment changes at Blue Hills, changes in the school's operating budget, excess and deficiency fund allocation, and foundation budget and minimum required contribution calculations. I probably should have put that tab first before I explain that all, but. So this is our municipal assessments. I'm sure you're used to looking at this, but this just gives you a, the breakdown of um, what your um, percent, what the percentage in students are by town, what your change is by town. As you can see, Braintree um, has three less students than last year, which is why you have your assessment has actually went down by 19,289 because a lot of this is based on your enrollment. Um, the, so you'll see your FY20 estimated required contribution from the governor's budget, the Blue Hills budget assessment, again, that's the number to make us whole, um, the renovation assessment, and then the schools to career assessment. And that's how we come up with your total requested FY21 assessment. So this is just some summary data about Braintree. Um, you know, what your enrollment numbers are, what your, your history of enrollment numbers were. Um, so we talk about your current enrollment, your enrollment history, your four-year average, your application enrollment um, history. So you had so many applicants, 86% of, oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong year. 99 applicants, 63% of them were accept, accepted, and 43% of that 99 um, actually enrolled. This is your assessment history and your assessment change from year to year. So as you can see in the last two years, you've had a decrease in your assessment and um, that's mainly due to your decreased enrollment at Blue Hills. Um, and then the changes in per pupil cost. So you'll see in A of 2020, that is the required contribution. So that's the required contribution divided by your number of pupils. And B is the entire um, Blue Hills assessment to make us whole, divided by all, all of our students and equally assessed to each student. So this is just a change in assessment by all of our towns. So, you know, I'm sure Braintree is happy to see themselves in the red um, here, and that is with a decrease of 19,289. And that is all I have for you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, maybe you could spend, or you or Jill could spend a few minutes uh, talking to us, like Charlie suggested, about the renovation you spoke about. Um, I think that would be helpful, and then we'll open it up to the committee members for questions. Do you want um, me, Jill, or you? You can start and I'll, I'll supplement as you need it. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So again, I'm actually new. I started in February, um, but I have learned a lot about this project in the last couple of months, I will say. Uh, so basically at this point, we're in the last, you know, um, the last haul um, when it comes to the project. Um, we are a little bit over in our time frame, and um, we're really trying to, you know, get everything done. I think our goal is to have everything done by the end of June. Um, there are some things that they will have to come back for after that, um, you know, when the project may end, but that's, you know, I think it was, you know, our HVAC, uh, not HVAC, um, yeah, HVAC, our AC um, testing that can't, because they can't test it at the moment um, and those, you know, little things to close up the deal. Um, but we're pretty close to the end of the project. Um, when you want to talk about some of the things that weren't included, because I think that's what Charlie, um, or Charles, I'm sorry if you're not Charlie, um, asked about, uh, I think some of the things that weren't included were something like our, um, we have an ish, uh, our West Stairs. Now they're, they're structurally sound, but it's been on our capital plan. Michelle, Michelle so I guess if you could, what was the construction project? What did you do over? How many buildings do you have? Like, so kind of- Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. sorry How yeah. much did it cost? When did you start? Kind of like, so everybody can be caught up with that. Sure, sure. We started, we started two years ago um, and every, it was called a limited scope repair. And we got approved for about 84 to $87 million to do this project. And it basically was supposed to cover Doors, windows, mechanical, plumbing, electrical systems, um, HVAC systems. What happened with the project is we ran into a lot of unforeseen conditions um, over the two years. So the project is actually over budget, and I'm just going to be honest with you, and it's behind the timeline. We're mm -hmm. finishing up now. We're doing commissioning right now and the punch list. We're finishing up with landscaping and we have uh, a few more things to settle on. They haven't turned over the building management system to us yet regarding the HVAC and the heating. So we're still working on that. Um, it was almost like the perfect storm, but we have new locker rooms we got, new lights. We have new, all the classrooms have um, new electronic whiteboards. All the vocational programs needed to be customized with their electrical outlets because some of the heavy equipment machinery um, needed different requirements. So we had to really go through phase um, each phase. We did over lockers, um, the floors were done over, which I didn't really agree with, but they were done over and they put in new floor logos. There's new windows, more efficient, um, new lighting, new doors, um, upgrades to the cafeteria had to be done. They ran into some plumbing issues underneath that where stuff was just corroded and rotted. Uh, I almost had a heart attack one day when I saw a bulldozer in the cosmetology shop because they had to rip up flooring and pull out a lot of stuff uh, that was under there because it actually used to be an old auto repair program. Hmm. So it, we had all the bathrooms redone over. We had our preschool done over. Um, it, there, there's a lot. The library was done over. If you come in, it, it's it's fresh. It looks fresh. It looks new. You'd really like it. We'd love to take you for a tour once this COVID coronation passes. Um, but it looks good to the outside. There's just a few things that weren't covered by the project because it was called a limited scope repair. Mm -hmm. So she was right. Like we have something that we'll have to take care of ourselves. Um, which is the west side stairs, which we can probably seal for now and get a, and repair and get away with that for a few more years. So we'll prioritize anything um, that needs to be finished. We also had to make everything ADA compliant. So what happened is um, the building inspectors and the plumbing inspectors, I guess with the limited scope repair, once they touched something, that was it. Then you had to bring it up to code. Um, and I don't think that they were really aware of this because this was only the second limited scope repair program done in Massachusetts. And I don't think they'll be doing one ever again. <laughs> well, whoever, to the chair, whoever designed it should have been aware of it. That's for sure. Hmm. Whoever engineered it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
So what, through the chair, what were some of the unseen um, things, Jill, that you, just like you said, the, under the cosmetology floor, like was it plumbing? It was kind of stuff that couldn't be visually seen and touched mm -hmm. during the planning stages. Right. It was a bun. Yeah. And there was like huge stuff that they had to rip up from underneath. There was leaky pipes under there that they didn't know where they went. There was stuff um, from the cafeteria when they started changing the plumbing. Everything underneath was corroded and there was garbage and <clears throat> it's just going to turn into a really a bad nightmare. And the plumbing inspector was really on top of it. There was things done, um, like they changed out a hood in culinary. And um, that, that entails a lot of details with the engineering on the top. And so, you know, we ran into issues where, I mean, I was part of this. Um, I would say, why are you engineering from your seat? You need to get out here and get up on the roof and look, or you need to go underground and look. Um, there was a lot of stuff they had to, they planned on doing when they did the heating, they put in ducts and they, what happened was they had to take the whole east side building and lower the lights because the lights were going to be above the ducts. We were like, what, what is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, there was just a lot of, I can't even, I could go back and look. It was a nightmare to live through an occupied um, renovation and our teachers and our students were fantastic mm -hmm. during it. They really were. It was just one, it was one thing after another. If you opened up, it was almost like a plumbing issue. If you opened up one thing, you sprung a leak somewhere else. <laughs> there was heat, like I can give you an example. They turned on the heat and one day I thought I was going to pass out. I was actually um, in the athletic director's office because that's where my temporary office was and I looked at the I had a little thermometer thing like a heat gun and it was 116 degrees in there <laughs> so I was like oh boy and so the, just the heating issues alone they had yeah. to ba the balancing and then they couldn't close doors because there was like wind tunnels that's part of the building management system and that's part of uh, the balancing of the overall the supply air and the exhaust mm -hmm. air and I would tell you to pay very close attention to that. When they tell you that the building signed off, I'd go open doors, I'd walk with them, and I'd see how things are, because I've lived through that many times, and it's, uh, it's tough. I think they play the Wizard of Oz song when I come by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can vouch for her. She's, she's extremely adamant about... I thought you were going to say she's a witch. <laughs> no, no, that's, so, that's what she was getting at. But no, I, I won't say she's a witch. I like what she's. Um, um, she's a good witch. Yeah, I yeah. try. Um, yeah. There's just so much I could write. I could actually write a book about this. Yeah. It's hard. People. It's hard renovating existing facilities. We go through it, and you think that it would be cheaper to do it, but the devil is in the details, mm -hmm. and it's when you start replacing components and parts of systems and not the complete system you should replace the entire system and because it's going to be the weak link of the system the part you don't replace down the road right. and making and one new system work with old parts is very hard too <laughs> yeah i would never recommend it honestly um i agree with you 100 percent. you're absolutely right it just doesn't it just doesn't work right no. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that overview. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I want to open it up to any of the committee members who have questions for the Blue Hills team. Councillor Connors. Sorry, different computer tonight. I don't know where my buttons are. Um, so I just have some general questions um, more concerning to the um, the revenues that you guys have put in for this year. Um, I know we've all seen it in the town council, a letter from Senator um, Keenan and Timley basically stating not to use the January chapter 70 numbers as well as the um, budget numbers that were put out. So I know you guys use them and I heard you do, you did say, you know, that we were salary cuts, potential salary cuts, uh, and other revenue sources. But can you go into more detail of, of how you're going to, because basically they're saying at this point, you, you can't use those numbers. They're not going to be accurate. 
So we were actually advised by the state um, with, the, with the Mass Association of School Business Officials and MASS to move forward with our budgets as is right now with the caveat that if our numbers come in less to um, start working, working on budgets of reductions. Um, I can't go specifically into, because it, it, again, it, it's, um, uh, I can't think of it right now, but I can't go into specific positions or specific accounts um, that we would be cutting from, but we are working on, we're very cognizant of the fact that we may not be getting what we had anticipated um, us getting for next year. Uh, we both Jill and I are attending a meeting tomorrow um, between MASBO and MASS with a, this is actually the full discussion is about, you know, land in your FY20 budget as well as where you're going to move into your FY21 budget. So um, I will say we're, we are with all of the business managers in the state of trying to move forward, but also keeping in the back of our minds our plan A and plan B. Um, I know that's probably not the specifics that you're looking for, and I get that, um, but some of the revenue, like I had explained earlier, so besides cuts, okay, we can talk about some of the revenue sources that we would move into. So like I said, we, we may have additional funds in our transportation. Um, right now, we are negotiating with our first student, who is our transportation company, there are 40 districts in the state of Massachusetts that use first students. So we're, we're trying to work together as a coalition. I've actually splintered off with a coalition from the um, South shore uh, looking to really, um, there are some other districts that have already agreed with their transportation companies at, like I believe Dedham, you know, agreed to a 50% pay for the remainder of the year. Um, and there are some other districts that have been in there we're trying to go in much, much lower than that. Um, we had gotten from first student our breakdown percentage wise of all of the expenses um, and how they come up with their costs to us. Um, and it's looking like we're in the 25 to 28 percent um, is what we're trying to negotiate. Um, also with a freeze for next year. Uh, again, first student doesn't know this yet. So you guys are the first to hear this. Um, because we're negotiating with them on Monday. Uh, but with that in mind, with the freeze in the transportation costs for next year, if possible, and the savings that we can move into our transportation revolving account from this year, we'll be able to apply more of that um, revenue um, from our regional transportation reimbursement into next year's budget. I don't know exactly how much that's going to work out to be at the moment. Um, but I do think that that will help us if there is a reduction in Chapter 70, we'll be able to apply those funds as some revenue. Um, another part of revenue as a regional school district, we do have excess and deficiency. Um, like I had said earlier, um, some of our, what we normally do is we try to allocate almost the same amount. We try and, we, we have a very lean budget. I, I mean, I will be extremely honest. We have a very lean budget. so. Um, we don't allocate large sums of E&D to the next year's budget already um, because, like I said, we try and keep it so there's not a funding cliff uh, at one year when we run out of everything and then it's on the districts to come up with that remainder amount. So um, we can possibly allocate some more excess and deficiency that we'll have. Um, we, we get certified in January. Um, so once uh, we get that certification, well, really, we already kind of know. I've already projected out where we'll be for next year. So I believe we'll be able to use some E&D um, because of our savings from this year, um, from FY20. Um, so those are kind of some revenue sources uh, that we can take a look at. We also have uh, you know, revolving accounts that we can, in, in some of the districts that we, um, so there's like most of the time with revolving accounts, there's the, you know, the district share, you know, to help keep the revolving accounts whole, to, you know, make sure that none of them run into the negative. There's allocated funds within the general fund um, to, to, you know, take a portion, like if, for example, um, you know, someone whose salary is paid out of a revolving account, but their benefits are paid within the general fund. So, you know, we may be able to move those benefits into the revolving accounts if they're still healthy to 
to save some funds within the general fund for next year. So, you know, we're really looking at all of our resources, every single one. We are continuously going through this budget. We are also thinking of things that we can possibly purchase this year. Um, I mean, there's, there's no question we're going to have a savings uh, utilities alone. So just to give you a quick example, uh, we got our bill for March and it was only two weeks, you know, if you think of it, two weeks in March that we weren't there and it was already, um, you know, three fourths of the cost of the month before in our utilities. So what bill? I'm sorry. What bill? Electricity. Electricity. Sorry. Um, so, you know, just in some of our utility savings, um, we think of maybe is there something that we can purchase this year that will be able to help us and not have to uh, purchase next year. Um, you know, we're really trying to take the looks at the, you know, the least amount of reductions as possible, but we also cannot use up every single reserve that we have um, that doesn't put us in a smart position either but we are committed to not coming back to the districts for additional funds. Um, we said that when we built this budget, one for even just the renovation project, um, but you know, that's something that you know, Jill's very adamant about and, and that's our district belief, so. And so it, would there ever get to a point where you would obviously, would you have to come back to the towns for additional costing depending on how deep the cuts were from the state? For additional funds from the from each district, like coming back for additional. Um, no, I, I'm the the way we're looking at it is if the state comes back with your reduced municipal uh, uh, local contributions, that your assessments would actually go down. And we, as the district, are committed to um, really trying to figure out. We're working on you know the state had kind of put forth a 10 to 15 percent um, possible reduction. They say education will be the last that they touch according to all of every single call that I have been on. Do I believe that 100%? No, I'm not naive, you know. Um, Blue Hills is not my first business manager job, so just to rest all assured, but um, yeah. So that that's really what we're looking at. Um, you know, does it put the district like, and I'm sure, you know, Braintree is looking at the same things. Like we, we just want to be as far away from the classroom as possible. And that's really our goal. Like we have done things about maybe looking about increased class size. Um, you know, uh, there are different positions within the district that we, it may not be to our benefit to reduce, but, um, you know, as far away from the classroom as we can get is really what our goal is. So uh, I don't believe we'll be coming back. I, I can, I cannot predict the future. Yes, of course. But um, our goal is to not have to come back to the districts. Okay. Um, on page 11 of your, um, oh, what document was it? Your proposed operating budget, you guys talk about having to go into service contracts December 2020 because the warranties are going to run out. Are those just um, so what, what I call OEM, like yep. they, they come in and service you on a regular basis or their emergency come in and contracts? Yeah, so actually beneficially, well, not that it's really that great, but the benefit of the, the building. So that was with the assumption um, when Steve did this, that was with the assumption that the building would have been turned over to us by this point. Um, with the assumption, with the building having not been turned over to Blue Hills. Um, have, right, so we, we have a warranty and it, it's a year from when the building is turned over to us. Are you accepted or you get beneficial use? I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, uh, if you could explain that, I don't know what your question, am I accepted or I get beneficial use? No, when the, when the systems have been turned over and you have beneficial use of the systems. Yes. Or you accept it or the contract's over and you, the warranty starts. Period begins. Or the warranty started, oh, okay. the warranty went back and started when you got the beneficial use. Um, no, it's it's when we accept it. We've actually had this conversation um, um, with the construction manager and our OPM. It's once we accept the building. Um, so until we sign off that we 100, everything is turned over to Blue Hills, 
they've been trained and it's properly functioning, um, yeah. that's when it will start. I wouldn't accept it anything till it's 100% working correctly. Jill. And that's why they no. don't like me. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say Good. the same exact thing. Yeah. So we like, we like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually what our argument's been all along. I said, you know, you can be mad at us, but I'm sure if it went up, up us against the, us against you, I'm sure the districts would side with us for not, um, for not accepting these things versus, you know, you wanting to get paid. So, um, Go ahead, Charlie. Did you want to say You something? accept it, you own it. There yep. you go. <laughs> we, we're very clear on that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, you would love some of our conversations with them. I think you would be very impressed with um, with the, the stamina and the dedication that, I, I mean, I'm very new, but I can tell you from what I have been a part of, what, what our people are doing to ensure that our funds are spent in the way that we intended them to be spent and that things are functioning in the way that we need them to function conducive to the building. Um, that mm -hmm. is our number one priority. Yeah. Well, when, pe when people walk away, you, you own it. You, you, yeah. you work there and the students learn there and those people are on to the next project. You have right. to as, make as sure you're getting what you need and what is part of the contract and in the specifications, you're getting what you need. You're yeah, paying I, for. As I, I had actually said just, I think it was yesterday, you know, this to them, you know, this is different for you. This is a construction job that you're, you're here to make money for your company and walk away. We're here to make sure that our students, we're getting the best bang for our buck because everything should trickle down to our students so that we're improving their educational, um, and we're improving their education and that's what our job is. And, and like Jill and I have both said, you know, you get aggravated that we ask so many questions or, or hold you accountable for things, but that's our job because we have to answer to it. When you walk away, we're the ones answering to the district on why we need more money to take care of things that were included in a, in a, a project. So Good. Um, we're, definitely, we're definitely pushing back, believe me. Thank you. I call it the velvet brick. <laughs> yep. When do you guys anticipate knowing the final results of your collective bargaining agreement negotiations? We actually have a meeting um, next week with it. We start with the teachers first, and I think we're getting pretty close. So I would say, if not this meeting, hopefully by the next meeting. Um, we have a really good working relationship with the teachers union. Um, I've been there since 1992, so I was a teacher, and I've moved my way up, um, working very hard to do so. And um, we have a really good school culture, so I'm hoping that we can resolve it quickly. And um, can I, why is the Braintree Schools to Career Zero? compared to the other? There's one other town that's zero, but we're zero as well, and I just- You don't, you don't, you don't participate, you don't participate. Yeah. and neither does Westwood. I think it's a choice. Um, I don't really know how it works, but I know that Westwood and Braintree don't participate and that's why it's zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know if there was some secret as to why we were zero. Maybe we were special. Or... <laughs> yes, you're you special. <laughs> um, other than that, I just, I, I do want to say the presentation you guys gave and the information you gave was phenomenal. Anytime I had a question as I started walking through it, you answered it. So um, it was a great presentation and you're right, you really do have a, a pretty bare bones um, budget. And um, I don't say that because I'm a Blue Hills graduate or anything, but <laughs> good job. It was a great presentation. So thank you. It was the most informative one I've seen yet. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Yep. Councillor Flaherty. Um, Councillor Connors touched on, you know, what I was going to get at, but um, you mentioned that your union contracts are still in progress. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question has to do with whether they're delayed because is there some kind of hang up in the negotiations or do you feel like they're basically on track and they're going to be resolved quickly? I feel like they're basically all on track. And I think what happened was with the COVID-19 and the shutdown, we were on our way. And what they did was they canceled the meeting and... I got them to all the school committee to go into the Zoom meetings 
right away immediately um, because the governor had allowed it. And I think it was just a, a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm not worried about it at all. I'm actually excited about it and I think it's fun. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so I know you're looking to make, if you have to make cuts, uh, I know you're looking to make them as far from the classroom as you can, as you said, um, mm -hmm. but I'm, my, I'm curious to know if there's, are there budget areas that you know you can't touch for, for contractual reasons? Like, is there a process of certain items that you can eliminate from consideration just because you're gonna be locked into paying for them? Well, any, um, just in, in the um, part of salaries per se, um, any item can be cut due to expense reductions. Um, we do have that allowance positions wise and expense wise. So um, contractually wise, I would say, you know, we really can't touch like the maintenance contracts. Um, those all need to be upheld. And especially now, you know, the proactive um, preventative maintenance for a building is the biggest money saver um, when you're, especially after you've invested so much money in this building. Um, so those are some of the things. Uh, again, the bus contract, we are in, we are locked in a bus contract. We actually just negotiated last year. This will be year two for us. So really negotiating the freeze for next year as well as the ability to renegotiate part of what our what we're talking about on Monday for the bus is the ability to renegotiate based on what the opening is going to be for next year. Um, but that is something that we may be locked into some portion um, of payment. Just I, we like I said, we don't know exactly how much yet, but we are trying to make sure to ensure that if they receive other funds from you know any you know government supplemental um, or stimulus, um, if they receive you know anything, if they reduce their costs, um, all of that will be worked in. So, you know the bus contract is something that we would probably be locked into um, in the maintenance contracts. Our, our copier contracts again; those are three-year contracts. Um, we will see a reduction in um, our our you know, print per, per print cost, because obviously we're not printing or copying millions of things, but the actual contract itself, we would still have to pay those lease contracts. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I mean, credits those from Dedham, those uh, solar credits. Oh yeah, so, I mean, so we negotiated a solar um, basic deal with the town of Dedham. Um, we sold off some of our solar credits that we had in excess to them. So we actually are going to be receiving some additional funds from Dedham last year, next year that we hadn't received in previous years. So that's another positive, sorry, that's another revenue place that I should have told you we were, um, I believe it's $60,000 um, for next year. So that's, you know. And we also haven't filled positions um, because right. of the COVID-19. We had some people that retired or um, left the facilities building is about three positions that we just haven't filled because I don't see the need for it right now while school's not in session. So we're trying to save money everywhere we can as far away from the classroom as possible um, for, right, for right now. Yeah. It doesn't mean that we're not gonna have to look because we'll know more tomorrow after the MASBO mass meeting uh, and chapter 70 and we are prepared um, to go for a one twelfth budget, which means basically we're level funded based on last year's budget each month, and we can't go. We know that we can't spend over that, so that's going to be um, something that we prepare for too. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. Were you done, Councillor Flaherty? I'm done. Okay, Councillor Shasha. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. And thank you. Uh, let me just echo what Councillor Connor said of all the budget presentations we've gone through. This is by far the most informative. Every line item was explained in detail. It was, it was very easy to understand what, what you had in your budget. So thank you very much for that. Um, my question is, is more um, out of curiosity. You mentioned some of the groups that you are a part of that are going to go through Chapter 70 funding and all that. I'm curious if at this point they are encouraging or suggesting any kind of um, um, planning or strategic thinking about possible scenarios, um, some of the things floating around like what if, what if schools didn't open in September? Um, also, what if they did open, but 
Um, they're going to keep classrooms at half size to keep students spaced farther apart, things like that. Uh, um, are those larger organizations kind of helping frame that kind of planning? Yeah, um, I, I know Jill can actually speak more about the reentry plan um, for next year because that's something superintendents have been on calls, I think, since day one about, but more recently. Um, uh, on the finance end of it, um, as MASBO, and um, I luckily am connected to a lot of uh, business managers in the state just because I have... Um, I'm outgoing, so I think I've talked to a lot of them and I make them listen to me type of thing. Um, but I, we've had our own discussions about even, you know, when I talk about plan A and plan B, that's plan A and plan B if chapter 70 comes in less and or if our municipal contributions are less, um, minimal contributions are less, right? But it also, we have to also think about, like Jill and I have just had discussions on, you know, budget C and D, you know, is virtual learning going to cost us more? And, and do we need to work that into the budget? If I, you know, so there's really multiple budgets swarming around. It's, it's you know, I will say, um, I don't think any business manager or superintendent right now are loving life um, because, you know, we're, we're really trying to, you know, work with that question on, you know, do we overanalyze, you know, and then you're, and then you're stuck with you know 10,000 masks at at school and 15 thermometer things that kids can walk through and you know whatever or do you if you don't overanalyze are you underanalyzing and then you're thinking oh i'm behind the ball on this so it's it's a it's a it's a balance but i can assure you that we are talking about it all of us are talking about it um, i think tomorrow is going to be a really great discussion for everyone in the state um, in our positions because you know, the, you know, Jay Sullivan, I don't know if you guys know, but Jay Sullivan is, um, you know, for me, like the guy at the state that I listen to the most, right? And I have been on a conference call with him as all business managers, basically once a week since the shutdown. And, you know, he's been really his, you know, his big thing is, you know, you know, hurry up and wait type of um, situation, but he really has been trying to guide us like every step of the way and being really transparent and honest about it. And I think that's what's, you know, as stressful as this is with the millions of budgets, I, I do think the state is, is giving us some great guidance and really helping us work together there. You know, Jay Sullivan was the one that, you know, formed those co coalitions. His suggestion was negotiate with your transportation company, but do it, a, do it together because you have power in numbers. Um, so, you know, he started that whole thing. There's, negotiations going on with out of district tuition for special ed students, out of district transportation for special ed students. There's, we have listservs going for, are you paying coaches stipends for spring? Are you refunding your preschool fees? Are you, um, who's doing what in, in how can we make us all look whole together and what's your situation versus our situation? Those conversations are going on every single day. Um, and we're all really, they're doing a great job keeping us all in the loop. I can say that from my perspective, um, but um, yeah, there's definitely some guidance and they're, and they're, they're trying to point us all in the same sort of direction with like the understanding that every single district is absolutely different, but somewhat we all have some similar strains, you know, um, so it, it's, it has been, it has been stressful, but it has, you, you're, that whole saying, we're all in it together. You know, um, the I would say my organization, um, MASBO, has done a great job just keeping us all on the same, you know, step on the stairs type of thing, moving forward. Great, thank you. Other questions from the committee members? Councilor Ryan? So I just want to ask, I know you said you have budget A, B, and you're looking at budget C and D. <clears throat> so the mayor recommended to um, all town departments to come in at a 4% cut mm -hmm. for the town of Branches. So that's every single department was recommended that. So what was, I'm trying to understand, like, so what was your original budget? How much have you cut given, um, you know, the economic situation we're looking at. I know you talked about positions not being filled, but, and, um, and 
could you cut even more? And I'm, uh, I, I just want to understand, um, are you, you going to wait to see what the money from the state is? Or so, did you look at it from the town perspectives that we need to save the towns as much as we can too, because the towns are hurting for money as well? Yeah. Um, so I will tell you our, our plan A budget and our plan B budget is a 10% reduction in chapter 70. Um, and the plan B is a 15% reduction. So those, those are the two numbers that were, I mean, 4% would be awesome for us. Um, but um, we are, we're being aggressive. So I listened to a couple of weeks ago, the entire um, um, round table at the state. I don't know if you guys uh, listened to that, but it was a three hour conversation at the state. And I think the underlying message through that was a 10 to 15% reduction. Um, so that's what Jill and I have kind of rolled with um, when we were planning our budget A and budget B. Uh, so yeah, so that's my answer. That, those are the two um, amounts that we're looking at right now. But it was really looking at the reduction coming from the state and not a reduction coming from the cities and towns. Overall, I would say overall a 10 to 15%. So, you know, 10% um, between chapter 70, a 10% reduction between chapter 70 and our required local contribution. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the committee members? Council so, Ryan? Um, I just wanna say it was a, a great, um, good information. It was easy to follow. And it seems like uh, the, Blue Hills has some pretty good leadership up there and I want to um, wish you the best going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the committee? All right. Yes, I'd like to echo my thanks. I know my questions that I had, you addressed all of them, Michelle. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for taking the time to really make this comprehensive for all of us, especially those of of us who this is our first time ever going through a municipal budget like this so very much appreciated to you and your entire team um so with that i think we're ready to move on um to actually tabling the motion so unless solicitor Tob, i just saw you come back on should you have anything yet okay <laughs> Um, is there a motion to table order 200038 to May 18th, 2020? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Clerk Semino, a roll call vote, please. Council Barica? Yes. Council Connors? Aye. Council Flaherty? Council uh, Ryan? Aye. And Council Sasha? Yes. All in favor? Thank you. That is unanimous. Um, and now moving on to 20039, Mayor FY 2021 budget for the Community Preservation Committee or take up any action relative thereto. No action is required on this order this evening. Um, and likewise on motion 20040 for the revolving accounts, no action is required on that order this evening either. So I would ask, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote, Clerk oh, Samina. Julia, you're on mute. Sorry, you're on mute. <laughs> I can see you trying to talk. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Connors. <laughs> My furnace keeps kicking on, and that's why I keep muting myself. I don't usually do that, so now I've twice started talking without unmuting. Anyway, my point is, before we adjourn, um, it seems like it might be fruitful at this point for counselors to just chat about our thoughts on how things are going thus far. So I feel like, you know, I've heard everything that I need to know for, about from the Blue Hills. Um, and I, I appreciate all of that input. It was really helpful. And I learned a, a huge amount. But at this point, before we close this open meeting, um, I'm just interested in hearing from counselors about how they're feeling on what they're hearing and um, concerns and, and their thoughts on this process. Can we do that? Councilor Ryan? 
I think the process is going very well. I think that we have a very engaged uh, Ways and Means Committee that has done their homework in advance and asked questions in advance. And any questions that remain get addressed um, at the night of the meeting. I think things are going well. I think a good point right now that you're bringing up, Julia, is do we want to have any callbacks? Um, has anybody identified anything related to that? I don't have any callbacks. Maybe if anybody does, we should get that on the radar screen right now, like you're saying, Julia. So, but uh, I think things are going very well, and I think we are doing our due diligence as a committee. We're doing a good job. Well, I have a question for you, Charlie. Um, did you get any satisfaction on your concerns over the 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 payment of the the way that the water and sewer folks were paying their their guys? You were very you didn't believe that that was what the contract said. And I can't remember specifically the verbiage that you used, but um, did they address that for you? I called the DPW director and I spoke with him and that is, um, it's actual and factual what they pay. And it's, um, I have some follow-up questions that I was gonna talk to him, but I am comfortable moving forward with the budget. It's a relatively small part of the budget. Uh, I just want to understand how uh, that fund is utilized during a standby period. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay, that's good to hear. Councilor Shasha. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I, um, I, I, I tend to agree with uh, Councillor Flaherty that at some point we might need to have a conversation that isn't necessarily around callbacks of any specific function, but I think we've, we've all kind of talked about the free cash situation. And once we go through the capital plan and see kind of the total impact, the sum of what this budget is telling us, I do feel like we are going to have to, or I would at least um, agree with Councillor Flaherty that it, it, would be, it would be helpful to me to hear what everybody else is thinking at that point. Um, and I, I think it's probably not quite yet, but at some point I do think that would be helpful. Uh, Councillor Shasha, I, can, I, um, I sent follow-up questions through Sue to the mayor's office uh, regarding, I had questions about free cash, revenue streams, um, Allen Street, the billboard. So I've sent a secondary list of questions off for the mayor's office to address. I believe we're gonna aim to get those answered on the 19th. Is that right, Sue? After, the, uh, after Dr. Hackett makes his presentation. Our um, callback night will be May 19th. Solicitor Taub. Um, as has been the case with every uh, budget presented to the committee up until this point, you will have the answers to the questions in advance of the 19th. So hopefully we can alleviate any concerns uh, and save everybody the, the time required that evening. Thank you. Councilor Connors. So I just, I agree with Council Flaherty and, and Councilor Sasha and um, Councilor Ryan. We definitely, I agree, we need to have some conversation. Um, I have asked for a callback of DPW. I, I do have some further questions and um, I'm gonna send those in advance and see if I get my answers in advance and then they won't need to come back. But as Sue pointed out, if I don't put it on, I can't, they, if they don't get put on the agenda, I can't talk to them. So, um, go ahead. Oh no, I, that was just for, just for notice. Oh, okay. I thought you were like asking me a question. Um, anyway, so, so as long as, you know, and I do have some additional revenue questions and I think, um, council, um, chairperson, chair, madam, madam chairperson, um, I think those are the questions that I was going to go back in and ask them working on a worst case scenario type spreadsheet of where we can really end up. And um, so there'll be some further questions from my side on that as well. But I agree, we definitely need to have an open conversation about it because I, I feel like we're living in our own little bubbles and um, there needs to be some, some sort of discussion about open conversation. So is tonight not the forum where people feel like they can have that conversation? I just want, because we do need to make sure, I believe, Sue, so it has to be public conversation. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I just, 
I feel that I agree with Council Sasha in that it has to be after the capital so we get a whole picture of what's going on and then at that point have a discussion. So I kind of want the whole picture. I want to go through the elder affairs and municipal licenses. Those are all smaller ones, but I want to get a education, want to go through all of them and then get have a discussion based on the entire oversight of it. Solicitor Taub. So if I'll just say a few things. Um, the we've tentatively looking at the 20th and the 21st for capital. The materials that were provided um, last week do have the breakdown of all of the capital projects and the recommended funding sources for each of those, including the items that will require free cash. Um, and so just just for purposes of keeping things moving, I just wanted to note that you know the breakdown of the funding for each of the recommended projects is included in the materials. We'll also have for the committee an updated um, updated information on supplemental number four, which will have free cash implications. And then the last thing I'll say is, um, you know, we have three departments scheduled for Monday evening. Uh, I have only received one question uh, for those. And if there's going to be questions for next week, Monday, we have the three departments. Tuesday, we have the school department, which is a fairly large uh, budget and there's also been a presentation that's been provided in advance of that evening's presentation and if there are going to be callbacks I just ask that everybody I know that everybody has varying obligations um, but you know it often takes multiple people to get the answers together and so I'm sure it goes without saying but I feel obligated to the department heads that are impacted that I ask that you please make every effort to get those to us as far in advance as possible so that we can provide you with as much detail prior to the hearings um, in an effort to address all of the questions and concerns uh, before the night of. And so I just note that because it is Wednesday evening. Um, and like I said, haven't really, haven't seen anything with the exception of the one question um, for next week. So I just, I know everybody's busy, but I feel like I need to say that so that we can be as productive as possible when we're together as a group. Thank you, Councilor Connors. So Nicole, thank you for that. I, I can say I am definitely struggling with keeping up, um, working 12 hours a day and not getting the books enough in advance in my eyes. So next year, maybe we could work on getting books a little bit earlier to actually give us the I'm losing you. <laughs> we lost you, Donna. All right, I'm gonna move to Councilor Shasha while you fix your sound. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was just going to say it's, it's, this is probably something for next year, but maybe some of it could be adopted this year. I, you will have seen a flood of questions coming from me Sunday, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, because for those of us that are still working, the weekends are the times that so having having large groups going Monday, Tuesday, typically is going to mean for me that all my questions are coming Saturday, Sunday night, and you won't get them until Monday. So I know it's, 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 um, we're, we're most of the way through the process at this point, for, but for going forward, if things could be a little later in the week, that would give you a chance to get the questions that come in over the weekends. I, I, you know, and, and we're doing everything we can. When I get the questions on the weekend, we work on the weekends and we answer them so that the committee has as much information as possible. Had this been a traditional budget year, you would have been given your budget books the evening of the full council meeting where the item was referred. Given the circumstances, the best we could do was put everything on the website the next morning. So, you know, the information was out there, not just for the committee, but also for the public with the hard copies then provided over the weekend. So, you know, I, we're, we're all making adjustments um, based on the current situation. And, and I have to commend the department heads that have worked incredibly diligently, both with myself and with Ed, to make sure that we're addressing the committee's concerns. I am confident that we have done that. I think it's been done in a way, maybe you'll have to take my word for it, um, since this is everybody's you know, all of our first significant ways and means together, but done in a way that is, is a stark contrast to how it's been done in years past. And I think that it's been really fruitful uh, and beneficial for everyone for us to be moving forward in the manner that we have. So as long as I think we're all willing to just continue moving forward together, 
um, and they're and appreciating that everybody has commitments and everybody is busy, but I can certainly tell you with 100% confidence that people on this side um, are, are doing absolutely everything they can to provide information and answer the questions as they're coming in um, and turning them around as quickly as possible. We know you're working really hard over there. We see it. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're all doing the best we can with what yeah. we have. Um, and I want to echo Charlie's sentiment at the beginning. And I feel like everybody, <clears throat> department heads, the members of this committee have been working extremely hard um, and doing a lot of legwork. And, you know, I, I want, I, I think we should all feel really proud for the work we're doing on behalf of the residents. Um, not just this committee, but the mayor's office, the department heads, and a lot of it goes unseen and unsung. Um, but I'm very grateful for, for all of the work that everyone's doing. So in tough <laughs> circumstances, so thank you. Uh, but Councillor Flaherty, I wanna make sure we get back. Do you have any other questions for committee members or is there anything else folks feel like they want to discuss this evening? I don't have specific questions on uh, for specific committee members per se, but I do find it tremendously helpful to hear people's thoughts on um, well, you know, what are what are your really the biggest concerns that you've heard so far about the about the budget? Um, I I think that those conversations um, I've had them sometimes with some people on the phone. It's incredibly helpful to uh, shape my thinking on. Um, various issues that we're facing. The, the landscape is always changing, right? We just got this letter from um, Senator Keenan and uh, Tim LT saying that we can't count on the figures that maybe we already knew we couldn't count on, but now we officially know we can't count on them. Um, the landscape is always changing and it is helpful to me to talk to the other folks who are neck deep in this because you know I can talk to my husband and he'll tell me what he thinks, but he hasn't read the numbers. You guys have. That's why I like talking to you about it. And there hasn't been a lot of space carved out for that. So I, it doesn't have to be during this meeting. That's fine. Um, but I would like to see, as Councillor Shasha suggested, a tongue carved out for that maybe towards the end of the process. If that's, you know, if you, if you guys would prefer to tack an additional meeting on, that's fine with me. I do have a question for Ed, probably. Um, what happens if the Chapter 70 funding is severely cut or, or the anticipated 21 million in state aid is severely cut? Do we need to go, does this process happen again? Ed, you're on, you're on mute if you're talking. <laughs> yeah. We can't really hear you. Ed, sorry, we you're not coming through. Is this any better? That's a little better, yep. Sorry. If we get a final budget from the state, and they're talking about maybe doing one twelfth budgets at the state, so we're not sure when we would hear, but we would take the final state budget numbers and look at that. If there were significant reductions over the, uh, the amount we're carrying, currently carrying, we would need to look at either replacing that revenue or reducing expenses or a combination of both of those. So we would be coming back, I think, from, from the mayor's office with uh, recommended adjustments to the, the budget that we will be discussing about passing on June 2nd. But I think we're ahead of the game as far as a lot of the cities and towns that are out there right now and they're trying to deal with looking at a, a 1 12th budget of basically a budget each month starting in the, for the month of July and August and going forward. Thank you, that's helpful to understand. 
Um, Councillor Flaherty, I think my concerns, like I I'd stated at the beginning, I sent over to the mayor's office. So it's the, the revenue sources that we're, we're not 100% sure about. And we'll, I'm waiting to hear, well, we are all can hear back from them um, on that, but. Okay. Councillor Shasha. So sorry, are we, are we saying that we are going to have a meeting? or we're not at this point? Well, right now we have, right now what's scheduled, and um, Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, we have on next Monday, we have the three departments we mentioned, um, Elder Affairs, License <laughs> Inspection, and Planning and Community Development. Yes. 19th, we have School. the Branch Public Schools, and then callbacks right. at this point. We have scheduled callbacks if we're, want additional information from the follow-up questions. The 20th and the 21st, we have right now for the capital plan. Yes. Um, and I'm happy to open it up to a discussion, but I would say like if we can get, a, have a robust discussion on the 20th and the 21st about the capital plan and the budget in totality, we, we may not need to schedule something else um, because I think then Right now, Sue is the plan to bring it to the full council on the 28th for a recommendation. So I believe it's May 26th is Tuesday. That oh, May 26th, the, okay. That would be the full council meeting for the capital and the supplemental. So we would be meeting for the supplemental on the 26th also for ways and means. Okay, uh, but that being said, you know, we can, I, that's what we have right now, uh, Steve. I, I'm, I mean, my, my gut tells me that the two days for capital should be more than enough and we can either squeeze it in there or, I mean, the 26, if we're doing callbacks, those should obviously, I would think be a good bit shorter than the original meetings. We could tack it on to one of those after we've gone through capital. Um, I don't know that we need a separate meeting, but I do agree with Council Flaherty. I do want to make sure that somewhere we are allotting some time to make sure that we can discuss this amongst ourselves and make a fully informed recommendation to the full council. Sue? So my suggestion would be um, when I post for the meeting on the 21st and the, 20th, and the 20th, we will also put the budget order on that agenda that therefore we will be allowed to talk and discuss that. Perfect. If we don't put it on the agenda, we can't discuss it. And um, so that would be, that would be my suggestion. Councilor Ryan. So I think we go with that. And if everybody's um, concerns and issues and it can be addressed, then we could handle it with those nights. If not, we could add another night with no at that point. Makes sense to me. I think that sounds like a good plan. And thank you, Councillor Flaherty, for bringing this up. And I think that's really helpful. Appreciate it. The tiniest least I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Councillor Ryan. How's Donna doing with their uh, with their with their audio? I'm fine. For some okay. reason, it decided to go into my iPods, which are in my pocketbook. So I have no idea. I had to disconnect them. Okay. But I'm all set. You guys have all said exactly what I agree. And thank you, Council Flaherty, for bringing it up because we do discuss. Mostly for me, I need to hear what you guys are thinking. <clears throat> We're a good team. All right. Um, I make a motion to adjourn? So, so we we'll have a motion and we have a second. Okay. I need to read the roll call. Roll call, Clerk, Clerk Samino. Councilor Barrica. Yes. Councilor Connors? Aye. Councilor Flaherty? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Aye. Councilor Sasha? Yes. All in favor to adjourn. Thank you guys. See you Monday. Thank you. See you on the night. Democratic Thanks. one in two minutes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>